present. If you choose to be physically present, you'll be screened by authorized staff for signs and symptoms of illness. Based on the results of that screening, certain physical attendees may be denied entry. The following members are pr physically present. Ms. Kupka, Mr. Bush, and Mr. Granger are, have the quorum in the boardroom. Mr. Stonehill and myself are doing it remotely. Temporary disabilities and our other medical conditions exist that prevents the member's physical attendance. I direct the clerk to include this statement in the statement of remote, pr remotely participating board members to be memorialized in the minutes. Uh, Dr. Young, do we have any amendments to the agenda? No, Madam Chair. Thank you. Do we have any callers who would like to speak in public comment? Do we have any callers online? Nope. Um, do we have any correspondence? Yes, Madam Chair, I received correspondence from, um, well, actually, Megan Pitts received two uh, correspondence from uh, individuals. One's a confirmed citizen and the other one I don't know. Um, but from Mr. Lynch, uh, 8263 Oakwood Drive, King George, Virginia, 2485. Um, dear Madam Chair, I work, recognize the hard work that the board has put into the budget, especially in these fraught and uncertain times. I think by and large that they have done a good job. I'm concerned about two items in particular, the leading employee cost of living raises and suspending debt litigation payments. Our employees are most valuable resource. It is in our best interest to make sure that they are compensated fairly. That means keeping their salary in line with inflationary pressure. I would encourage you to reinstate the cost of living payment issue. However, if you feel that you cannot do that, then you should commit to making, making them whole in the next fiscal year, 21, 22. We cannot go back to the days where we can pull the kick the can down the road. Our employees deserve better than that. Similarly, with the debt mitigation payments, if you feel you cannot make those payments in the upcoming fiscal year, you should commit to making an increased payment in the following fiscal year, 21, 22. Thank you for your, my consideration. For your considerations of my comments, James P. Lynch. The second correspondence is from a Christine Mays, no address submitted. She says it's time to open up all businesses, no exceptions, use guidelines and safety procedures as warranted, but it's time to open up. We cannot afford to remain closed. People need to work. End of comments. Thank you, Dr. Young. Um, business 40 years. She's now the co-owner of Love and Sell It. Is that a caller online that would like to speak? I think that was just a little bit of feedback. For anybody that's online, please, um, if you didn't want to speak right now, please turn off your microphone so we don't hear any background noise. Sometimes it's hard to forget to turn that little uh, button off, but just so we can hear everybody clearly. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Dr. Young, the floor is yours. Dr. Young? Sorry, Madam Chair, um, I forgot to hit my unmute button. Okay. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, um, we are now going to uh, have a discussion about the declaration of emergency. As you all are fully aware, uh, we are currently under a declaration that ends at uh, tonight at midnight. Um, and I wanted to propose to the board that uh, we redeclare extending the local declaration for an additional 30 days. And I'll read um, the ordinance that I'm asking for the board to adopt. It says, whereas beginning in March 2020, Virginia Governor Ralph S. Northam issued various executive orders, including 51, 53, 55, and 61, as well as various orders of public emergency, all as amended from time to time, declaring a state of emergency for the Commonwealth of Virginia arising from the novel coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic clarifying and expanding such orders and ordering a stay at home slash shelter in place order and whereas executive order 61 allowing for phase one of the easing of certain temporary restrictions due to COVID-19 that does not take effect until May 15th, 2020. And whereas all of these orders shall be and will remain in full force and effect at least until June 10th, 2020. And whereas these executive orders acknowledge the existence of a public health emergency that constitute a disaster and or a major disaster as defined by Virginia Code 44-146.16 arising from the public health threat presented by the communicable disease anticipated to spread. And whereas these executive orders 
implementation of the Commonwealth of Virginia Emergency Operations Plan, activation of the Virginia Emergency Operations Center to provide assistance to local governments and authorization for executive branch agencies to waive any state requirement or regulation as appropriate. And whereas on March 13, 2020, the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, declared a national emergency beginning March 1st, 2020, in response to the spread of COVID-19. And whereas on March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization declared the COVID-19 outbreak of pandemic. And whereas on April 7, 2020, the King George County Board of Supervisors passed an ordinance to provide a method to assure continuity of government in the event of a disaster for a period not to exceed six months, pursuant to Virginia Code 15.2-1413, and whereas the board that finds that COVID-19 constitutes an ongoing real and substantial threat to public health and safety and constitutes a disaster and or major disaster as defined by Virginia Code 44-146.16 being a communicable, communicable disease of public health threat. And whereas on March 16, 2020, the local director of emergency management declared a local emergency on King George County, which is confirmed on March 17, 2020 by the board. And whereas the local emergency order was extended through May 15, 2020, and whereas Virginia Code 44-146.21C further provides that a local director of emergency management or any member of the government body in its absence may, upon the declaration of a local emergency procedure, without regard to time consuming procedures and formalities prescribed by law, except mandatory constitutional requirements pertaining to performance of public work. And whereas the local director of emergency management and the board have determined that the local emergency and disaster is and will continue to pose a threat and actual occurrence of an emergency and disaster, which is of sufficient severity and magnitude to warrant coordinated local government action to prevent or alleviate the damage, loss, hardship, or suffering. And now, therefore, on the 15th day of May 2020, I name C. Young, PhD, County Administrator of the King County of King George, acting in my capacity as a local director of emergency management, and with the consent of the King George County Board of Supervisors, hereby declare a continuing local emergency pursuant to the Commonwealth of Virginia's Emergency Services and Disaster Law, Virginia Code 44-146.13. This declaration will expire on midnight of the 15th day on June 2020, unless other on building room 1049, 10459 Courthouse Drive on May 14, 2020, the following declaration was consented to, confirmed, and adopted, declaring a local emergency to exist in King George County, Virginia. Whereas the Board of Supervisors of the County of King George County, Virginia Board finds, one, that COVID-19 constitutes a continuing real and substantial threat to public health and safety and constitutes a disaster and or major disaster as defined by Virginia Code 44-146.16 being a communicable disease of public health threat. And that, two, on March 16, 2020, the local director of emergency management declared a local emergency in King George County, which was confirmed on March 17, 2020, by the board and three, that on April 16, 2020, that declaration of local emergency was suspended through May 15, 2020, and that four, the local emergency and disaster is and will continue to pose the threat and actual occurrence of an emergency and disaster, which is of sufficient severity and magnitude to warrant coordinated local government action to prevent or alleviate the damage, loss, hardship, or suffering, and five, that the county administrator of the county of King George acting in its capacity as local director of emergency management, recommends that the board consent, confirm, and declare a continuing local emergency pursuant to Commonwealth of Virginia's Emergency Services and Disaster Law, Virginia Code 44-146.13. And now, therefore, it is hereby declared by the Board of Supervisors of the County of King George, Virginia, that a local emergency exists and continues to exist throughout the County of King George, Virginia, and declaration of a local emergency Board of Supervisors, May 14, 2020. It is further declared and ordered that during the existence of this emergency, the powers, functions, and duties of the Director of Emergency Management and Emergency Management Organization and functions of the County of King George are those prescribed by the laws of the Commonwealth of Virginia and ordinances, resolutions, and approved plans of the County of King George in order to mitigate the effects of said emergency. This state of local emergency shall end with this condition of peril as abated or at midnight on June 15, 2020. Board of Supervisors, King George County, Virginia. Thank you, Dr. Young. Uh, start uh, discussion. Uh, Ms. Kupka. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, my position on this is the same as it was when we originally adopted the first emergency ordinance. I look at this as a financial tool uh, that allows us to procure resources 
in a much more efficient fashion than we would normally have to given our normal uh, financial policies. Uh, so for me, between how I look at it as a financial tool um, and the fact that we did have a declared outbreak last week at a local long-term care facility, got some more test results back and have some more possible cases, uh, knowing the incubation period can be up to 14 days. I think it's wise at this point in time to keep this declaration in place, uh, see how we do the next 30 days and then let it die a natural death. But for me, as I said, this is a financial tool and this to me should not have impact on people's desires or wishes to follow the opening plans that the governor is enacting fit for phase one starting tomorrow. So, uh, a yes. Thank you, Ms. Kupka. Mr. Bush. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, a couple things. In reading this, I have issues with the seventh whereas on the actual declaration. Um, if even going off of Dr. Stern's comments at our last meeting, I don't think when, when we looked at the numbers, we don't have something that merits a major disaster King George County wide. The numbers just aren't there. And then in the affirmation of, of declaration of local emergency that Dr. Young just read, number four, sufficient severity and magnitude to warrant. I just don't see the evidence of that. Um, it's also pretty concerning that we can't get a straight answer again from Rappahannock Area Health District. In fact, um, I'm aware that Dr. Stern today made a comment to one of my colleagues and they're free to talk about it, that um, elected officials don't need to know this information. I find that very troubling. Overall, I, I think there was a point where we were being cautious, but at this point, I don't, I don't see um, countywide us being in a state of emergency. Now, I, I do appreciate Ms. Kupka's points as to the financial aspects of this, um, but at this point, the governor and the Virginia Department of Health are also using as um, a way to support their, their, their stands, the number of counties that are currently under a declaration of emergency. Um, so I'm not willing to exchange pennies from the federal government or the state to maintain our emergency status. Um, I believe that we will see some reimbursements for the period that we were under a declaration of emergency, but to declare us under a state of emergency through June 15th, based on the numbers that we have, and those numbers are cumulative, um, I'm against, and I think this thing should die at midnight tonight. That's my opinion. Thank you, Ms. Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Bush. Mr. Granger. Uh, yes, ma'am, I appreciate it. Uh, I'll keep it short. I, I, I agree with Ms. Kupka and her stance. Um, I think this is a tool for, for uh, being able to move forward with purchasing those things we need. Uh, and that's the only thing I look at as, uh, I agree, I don't think this should uh, inhibit people in regards to the, the looking to start opening up uh, or inhibit people from wanting to do those things either. But um, I, I think we should take advantage of the tool that we have and um, I, I'm in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Granger. Uh, Mr. Stonehill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, two things. One, uh, caller number three, whoever you are, your phone uh, or your mic, because we're hearing you and your dog barking. Um, for the declaration of emergency, um, I'm in favor of it, just as Mrs. Kupka said and Mr. Granger, just for a financial tool for getting um, you know, funds back to us. Um, I agree with Mr. Bush. I don't see us being under a um, disaster or um, 
the number four, where, which I just lost my place. But, I, you know, I, I don't think we're in a, a huge disaster here in King George County. We have a few cases, um, you know, and I don't want to scare people, but if if this needs to be in effect, if the federal government still has it in effect, the state government has it in effect, I say we should stay in it just for, you know, uh, recouping our financial losses. Um, so I'm a yes. Thank you, Mr. Stonehill. Well, um, I'm more in line, I mean, totally honest with what Mr. Bush said, but I understand the financial component of it. And the other financial component, if we alleviate it, from my understanding, Mr. Britton, is that we would not be able to waive certain uh, fees or if, if people aren't able to pay their bill and give them a break on it. And is, I remember you telling me that, Mr. Britton. And so that, that concerns me able to, to be able to have that tool and to be able to work with some of the agreements we've made with other localities, maybe to get more PPE and, um, but I am a little concerned and, I, and I'm hoping that Dr. Stern keeps with the promise that he made to me today that the staff make sure that they, we get those uh, reports and I, it's SIT report, correct, Dr. Young? I wanna make sure I get that situational report. Did I get the term correct, Dr. Young? Yes, ma'am, a SIT rep. So that they'll be giving them to our EOC every day so that we have an accurate, accurate counting of the cases in our community. But um, I wanna make sure that, you know, we maybe have vaccine and, and you know, the two different kinds of tests, the ones that see if you're, you're an active per, uh, carrier of COVID or if you're asymptomatic or you just have the antibodies. But I, I don't know if Virginia is there where they can differentiate that, but my concern is, you know, there could be an elevated number if you're just have the, if you're lumping all those totals together. But um, even though I, I really feel that we need to open up and, and a businesses are suffering and, you know, we can't keep everybody locked away forever, is that I understand both sides, but I'm gonna have to vote for extending it, but I wish we could extend it for a shorter amount of time, maybe 10 to 15 days and not 30 days, but I, I Am I correct, Mr. Britton? Is thirty, or is there? Could you make it shorter? What is the? Uh... Yes. Yes, you can make it shorter. And for clarification, uh, Madam Chair, we would still be able to um, postpone filings and waive um, fees and interest on because those are by ordinance. Um, what we had, uh, what the concern was on the water and sewer authority um, under the proposed regulations. Terminations are ceased. In other words, they, uh, the Water and Sewer Authority is not allowed to stop services during a local emergency. So, if the local emergency went away, then if people weren't paying their bill, the Water and Sewer Authority, under its rules, would have to terminate services. So, their authority is tied to a local emergency, not a state emergency. But the um, fees. Those are done by ordinance, the late fees and interest and the postponement of filing deadlines for taxation, those would still be in effect. Thank you, Mr. Britton, for clarifying that. Um, how would uh, everybody, everybody want to go with the 30 days or maybe 15 days? And I'm going to pull everybody to see if you're feeling, so if you're still on the 30, that's cool. Um, Ms. Kupka. <laughs> I would be inclined to keep it at 30 uh, only because, well, I'm gonna rep for my service authority customers. I'm on the service authority board of directors as well. And I know some of them are gonna be hurting and I cannot see any condition under which we could allow their water, their services to be terminated when one of the key ways to combat this virus is by washing your hands. So I'm sticking with 30, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bush, I know you what you're gonna say, but go ahead. None. Mr. Granger. I would leave it as it is uh, with consideration for the service authority. I think that's a valid point and, and certainly don't wanna put those uh, individuals into uh, a bad state. Thank you, Mr. Stonehill. I would keep it at 30 the way it is, um, but it can be rescinded at any time, correct? That is correct, correct sir. Okay, yeah, then I'm good with 30, and if we need to cut it off at 10, we'll, we'll do it at that point. All right, 
Thank you. Um, so that's the end of the discussion. Uh, do we have to, we have to make some motion, Mr. Burton? Well, um, well, the way it's drafted currently is, is that um, Dr. Young would declare a local emergency and then the board would vote on the affirmation. Okay. I move to adopt the affirmation and declaration of local emergency as presented. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Nay. Chair votes aye, motion carries. Thank you, Dr. Young and Mr. Britton for that. All right, Dr. Young, on to the budget. Yes, Madam Chair, this is uh, the public hearing. I believe you have this, uh, the language to start the public hearing. Oh, hold on. I do not have that language to... One second, Madam Chair. Thank you. Madam Chair, um, I was just advised by Lawanda that she sent it to your email. Um, do you have the ability to check your email? Yes, if you give me one second. Sorry to all those online. Virtual meeting is always an experience. If you give me one moment, I can uh, look at my email and double check. Doing everything on one tablet, one screen. Thank you for everybody pa being patient. Yep. Well, one second, I'll bring it up and... Hold on one second. Madam Chair, I just resent you. It's the second document. Yep. All right. Sorry, my uh, apologize, everyone. Uh, my hotspot is taking a little bit to load up, and so I'm just waiting for it to load. Public hearing statement. Correct. Right. Uh, for the budget. Yes. Yep, it's just yeah. taking a second to load. Yep, I got it. You ready? King George County Board of Supervisors will now hold a public hearing regarding the proposed FY 2020-2021 operating budget pursuant to section 15.2-2506 of the Code of Virginia. This FY 2020-2021 budget proposal has been prepared, advertised, and published for information and fiscal planning purposes only as required by law. The inclusion in the budget of any items does not constitute a commitment or obligation on the part of the Board of Supervisors of King George County to appropriate any funds for that project or purpose. The budget has been presented on the basis of the estimates and requests submitted to the county administrator. There is no de designation or allocation of any funds of King George County until there has first been an appropriation for that purpose by the Board of Supervisors. The budget is for informative and fiscal planning purposes and will not be approved, adopted, or ratified by the Board of Supervisors at this public hearing. Dr. Young, the County Administrator, will provide a brief overview of the proposed budget. I will then open the floor for public comment, either in person or by electronic means. I ask that you limit your comments to three minutes in order to afford everyone an opportunity to speak. All right, Dr. Young. Thank you, Madam Chair. Here's our agenda. Next slide. As the board recall, um, the board took, I'm sorry, the county staff with the board's approval took um, drastic measures to ensure that we uh, brought to the board for your all's consideration a uh, budget that's not only austere, but that is financially responsible given um, the current state of affairs in our county and the financial state of affairs, not all in, but in our county. Um, actions that have been taken in our original proposal was to delete pay raises for county employees, remove capital purchases from the budget, 
include the purchase of vehicles and furniture. We suspended non-essential travel. We maintained current staffing levels uh, in 2021 as reflected in 1920. And we suspended the annual payment to debt mitigation fund. By taking those, action, those actions, we were able to cut $1.5 million from the original budget request that was brought before the Board of Supervisors. However, um, after doing our revenue forecast, we came to realize that um, even though we had took these measures, that it still left in a budget gap of $2,160,396. So after learning about that budgetary gap, we then went recently to having conversations with our neighboring localities and look for opportunities to reduce expenditures uh, through regional partnerships and regional organizations to help um, mitigate the impact on uh, local budgets to include level funding outside agencies like the GWRC or the George Washington Regional Commission and the Tri-City County Water, I'm sorry, Tri-City County Soil and Water Conservation District. In addition, we reduced the Rapid Hennig Regional Jail budget, reduced the Juvenile Detention Center budget, and we also received updated revenue estimates from state funding. After taking those actions in combination with the original um, um, restrictions that we have placed on the budget, we were able to reduce that original budget gap from $2.1 million to $1,919,903. Next slide. Understanding that, or this is our uh, budget proposal for fiscal year 2021 for your consideration. The, 50, the fiscal year 2021 current proposal calls for the budget to increase 3.7% from $85.3 million to $87.5 million. Under the current proposal, 57% of the budget will be dedicated to the schools, with the remaining 43% being allocated to meet county needs. If you will note that our non-school expenditures are increasing by 2.1%. If we move forward with this proposal, we will realize a budgetary gap of $1,919,903. To close this gap, the budget proposes to tap the revenue stabilization fund for $1,619,903, leaving a $100,000 deficit. We will then reduce the local contribution to the schools by $300,000 to address that deficit. Please note that due to state and federal funding, the reducing of the local contribution to the school still allows for the administration to realize a budget to not adopt the proposed budget for at least seven days after this public hearing. Understanding this, I would like to recommend that the board take a public vote, vote to approve the school's budget with a local contribution in the amount of $17,545,584 and authorize the county staff to advertise a special meeting of the Board of Supervisors for May 21st, 2020 at 6 p.m. to adopt the county budget. I'll stand by for your questions, concerns, or guidance. All right, um, let me go around the horn. Ms. Kupka, do you have any to... No, ma'am. Mr. Bush. No, ma'am. Mr. Granger. No, ma'am. Mr. Stonehill. No, ma'am, no questions. All right. Uh, Dr. Young, you just need a consensus or an actual vote for this? Just clarifying. Yes, Madam Chair, we need an actual vote um, because we are going to advertise a special meeting that requires a, a public vote by the Board of Supervisors to advertise that meeting. Okay. So well, we need a vote. Ma Madam Chair, we also need a vote to by May 15th to approve the school board budget. So there's two separate votes. Uh, yes, I, want to thank you, I am so, to approve the school board budget of $17,545,584 of local funding. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any nay? Chair votes aye, motion carries. Now I need a second second motion for the budget. I move to advertise a public hearing for May 21st, 2020 for uh, adoption of the budget. A special, a special meeting, sir, we won't need a public hearing. I apologize, I amend my um, statement to make it a special meeting. Second. All those in, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Chair votes aye, motion carries. 
Now, Dr. Young, you have the PPTRA, correct? Correct that, ma'am. Next slide. Another issue we have to consider for the following fiscal year is the Personal Property Tax Relief Act. The Personal Property Tax Relief Act, or PPTRA, is a program that allows localities to provide owners of registered vehicles an abatement on the first $20,000 of value for qualifying cars. The money used to abate the personal property tax is provided to the county from the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth has provided a historically fixed amount of $2,147,868 to King George County for the PPTR program. The funding allows for the county's PPTR to be set at 32% for fiscal year 1819 and 30% for fiscal year 1920. However, the county's vehicle population size and value is dynamic. We remain fiscally in sync with the Commonwealth's static funding. The PPTR must remain in line with the funding provided us by the Commonwealth. Our mock runs predict that if we maintain the PPTRA at 30% in fiscal year 2021, we will expend $2,136,599 in abatements, or slightly $10,000 less than the funding provided to us by the state. The decision to maintain our PPTRA at 30% will allow the county to support the program without subsidizing the program with general fund money. I recommend that the board take a public vote to adopt the 30% personal property tax relief rate for fiscal year 2021. Do I have a motion? Did you move? Yep, yeah, Mr. Granger moved. I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any nay? Chair votes aye, motion carries. Dr. Young? Yes, ma'am, that concludes my presentation on the budget in the public hearing, Madam Chair. All right. Um, and we have no other business, correct? I'm sorry, I don't have an agenda in front of me. No, ma'am. Um, we have also a public hearing for the emergency ordinance for the suspension of penalty fees and interest in property taxes. All right, hold on. Let me go back. That's in the copy you sent me, correct? Mr. Britton? Sure. Yeah, just hold on a second. I got to go to my email. All right. Once again, it's taking a minute to load. All right, the King George County Board of Supervisors will now hold a public hearing to receive public input regarding the emergency ordinance to extend the filing deadlines and to suspend penalties, fees, and interest for personal property taxes. This proposed ordinance has been published and advertised as required by law. I will first ask for a brief overview from staff and then I will open the floor for public comment either in person or by electronic means. And I ask that you limit your comments to three minutes in order to afford everyone an opportunity to speak. Upon completion of public comment, I will bring the matter back to the board for consideration. The board may or may not take action tonight, depending on information received during public comment. Dr. Young. Yes, ma'am. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a significant financial impact on our residents. In light of this, the King George County Treasurer has proposed the attached emergency ordinance to help mitigate our citizens' financial burden. And when I say attach, the um, proposed ordinance is either in front of you in person or has been emailed to you. Um, included in the ordinance is a proposal to shift the personal property tax due date from June 5th, 2020 to June 19th, 2020. In addition, penalties, fees, and interest on late payments will be suspended through June 30th, 2020. I recommend the King George County Board of Supervisors authorize the county staff to, um, I'm sorry, I recommend that the King George County Board of Supervisors adopt the ordinance as presented. All right, do we have a... Dr. Young, any public comment on this? No, Madam Chair. Do we have anybody online that would like to speak in public comment? Mr. Bush, do you have a question? I'm guessing he was just leaning towards the mic. It's okay. Hey, ma'am, um, I, I don't have ahead. a question. I, I don't know what I did to prompt you to ask me, so I apologize, but uh, I think this is good. I'm ready to vote on it. Okay, sorry about that. You were leaning towards the mic. I have a small screen. 
Um, so do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Chair votes aye, motion carries. Dr. Young? Uh, Roger, man, the last thing on the agenda is the way ahead. And again, the way ahead is on May 21st at 6 p.m. We'll meet in the boardroom to adopt the budget. Um, um, and we'll also go ahead and put out notice uh, regarding, I'm sorry, reflecting the board's approval to shift the uh, due dates for um, personal property taxes. Uh, Madam Chair, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Dr. Young, and thank you for all your staff and all the hard work they've done to get this uh, to us. Um, do I have a motion for adjournment? I move to adjourn until Tuesday, May 19th at 6.30 in the boardroom. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye.